What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean. And this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now this snippet right here is from an interview with Atira Lani. She is an entertainment lawyer and boy, she has that knowledge for y'all. And more importantly, in this snippet right here, she's discussing how she negotiates some things for artists that they didn't even know that they can negotiate. What aspect do you take in negotiations? Like, are you actually, like if you're with an artist and this is your artist and you might be dealing with a label or whoever, are you actually doing the negotiations yourself? Like saying, hey, this number, we wanted this number, or do you allow the artist to, to do it and you just inform them on what's good or bad? That's a great question. It depends on the relationship. So um, if it's like a, hey, I don't know what's going on. They just told me that they want to use my song. Can you let, you know, can you, you know, talk to them for me? In that type of situation, I get all the control and I say, this is what we want. And y'all let me know if y'all are okay with that, <laughs> you know? But sometimes like um, a lot of artists, they have managers and their manage their manager will negotiate the percentage. And in that situation, it'll be like a, hey, this is what we discussed. Is this cool? You know, if you want to make any changes, let us know. But this is what these things specifically are already negotiated. And so in, the, in that sense, I don't negotiate any of the percentages or any of the um, things that they've previously agreed upon, I just will try to make the contract more on their side than it is at the mm -hmm. moment. So I might negotiate something and I'll send it over to you because I'm like, I'm good. This is what I want. But you might still look at it and say, you know, what, what about this? You still mm -hmm. might. Okay. Correct. Interesting. All right. All right. That's, that's encouraging because I feel like there's a lot of situations that, I mean, I, even I have encountered at times where, you know, I, as far as the negotiation part, I might be able to say some basic things as far as those few numbers that I know, like that main number, but it might be the, the sign of print that you might not even know what you're giving up or not. Exactly. Yeah. And, and those are the usually things that I, uh, those are usually the things that I negotiate on my own every okay. single time which is because you wouldn't even know that you could change it. But what I tell my clients is everything on that paper is negotiable. <laughs> yeah. I remember I have an uncle that he, he pretty much considers damn near everything in life negotiable. No negotiable. So. <laughs> that, uh, that sounds like me, my kind of guy. Because I feel like everything is negotiable and there's an exception for everything. So. True. All right. So what what is one example of something that – was small that you negotiated where previously they probably weren't even thinking of negotiated just to kind of give artists an idea of what could be out there that they would never think of. Okay, so now because of how prevalent social media is, for example, you know, artists have these crazy followings on social media. When they sign to a label, they give the label authority to, to post on those pages, to do all kinds of stuff on those pages through and for them. Um, but you want to retain that, you know, you want to retain control over it. You want to make, you want to retain certain, just, uh, just, no, that's literally it. You want to maintain control over it. And a lot of people don't know that you can literally put in the contract. Hey, you know, even though you're allowed to do this, this, and this, at the end of the day, anything that you post on here is mine. When, when I leave you, I get full control of my account back. That's it. But most people don't even think to do that. Mm. That's interesting. So, like, there are situations okay. where, like, a label might post on an account and say, hey, you can't take this down. Like, they, they do things All like that. All kinds of things. All kinds of controlling things. Now, in the full interview, she actually touches on some other things that artists can negotiate, especially when it comes to certain things about payments and how to get paid that, I mean, I didn't even realize or know. But I'm going to say that for the full clip. You can watch that if you click the link in the description below once the interview drops. But I think one of the biggest takeaways should be from this video alone, though, is just the fact that you need to have people in your corner that knows these other things because there's no way you're going to be able to know it all yourself. There's no way you're going to even have time to think about doing 
doing it all yourself. So if you can find a great entertainment attorney, somebody like that, when it comes to contracts, it's only to your benefit. I know there's times where we're like, yo, man, this isn't that big of a deal. And it's not like it's going to make me super rich. So up front, I might be losing money having to pay for a lawyer or entertainment attorney. But at the end of the day, you got to think about the fact that this is your career. You got to think long term because these things have bigger results oftentimes than we are even aware of. Anyway, not only should you guys follow Atira, you guys should follow Guard Your Gifts. That's Atira's page that she's developing where she gives a lot of this knowledge out for the free on Instagram. So you guys should go ahead and check that page out. There's a lot of bad information out there and trust me, Atira knows what she's talking about. So go to Guard Your Gifts on Instagram. I'll put a link to that in the description and all that good stuff as well. This video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com and if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, might as well share it. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe.